With an anime that feels like it has just as many characters as Marvel to keep track of, it's no surprise that people try to pair them together. From the canon or wholesome to the weird or illegal, there's no lack of pairings in the My Hero Academia fandom that can make even the most experienced of anime veterans cringe. This episode is going to cast a spotlight on some of the worst ships the anime's fandom has created. I wish I could say I was surprised by any of these on the list, but unfortunately I'm not. And that's scary. Please keep in mind that this is not the master list of gross ships used in the fandom. This is just what I could handle before I became physically ill from all the research. I wanted to boil my laptop and phone after what I witnessed, but I still need them, so I settled for erasing my browser history. Thank God for incognito. These ships will be listed in no particular order since they're all their own special types of gross, so don't take the order as any sort of ranking. Thank you and let's get started with this pile of garbage. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Let's start off easy. Manetta x anyone. While the incel boy is a popular trope in anime, Manetta takes things to the extreme. Manetta is so bad that literal children have had to foil his plans to sexually harass and stalk the girls in class 1A. How most things that have come out of his mouth haven't gotten him expelled, or at the very least permanently homeschooled, is beyond me. Not to mention the fact that he canonically states Eri will be quite the looker when she grows up. She's six, homie. No, pairing him with any of his targets is something that only a fellow incel could think to do. In the canon universe of My Hero, his actions were so bad that the girls of Class 1A attempted to brainwash him to make him stop. Honestly, there are really only two ships Mineta should be considered for, and it's Mineta X Trash Can or Mineta X Death. Personally, I ship the latter. Next up, Shigaraki X Midoriya. That escalated quickly. I know. That's the list for you. While enemies to lovers is a beloved trope, one even my channel has kind of played on or hinted at on occasion, this is a crossing a god-awful boundary. First of all, the age difference, ew, with Midoriya being like 15 to 16 and Shigaraki confirmed to be 21. It would be a grooming type situation at best, pedophilia at worst but all around toxic considering these two characters aren't enemies because of a your mom joke gone wrong. Shigaraki literally wants to kill Midoriya via any means necessary. Midoriya may believe that anyone can be redeemed, but mm, maybe not like that. Side note, I met Shigaraki's voice actor, English voice actor this weekend. Super cool guy. Low key though, my fiance was more excited than I was because he also voices Trunks. And I, I mean, how can I compete with Trunks? Next up, Toga x Midoriya. While not quite as icky as the previously mentioned ship, considering they're at least the same age, Toga is the main problem with the ship. While this would be a solid ground for enemies to lovers based on their situations and encounters, Toga's mental state and personality put this ship on the list quick. She doesn't love Midoriya, even if she says she does. She's obsessed with him. Would you pair a character's literal stalker with them? Actually, don't answer that. The relationship between Midoriya and Toga, until Toga started viscerally hating him, was something similar enough to a pop culture idea of a yandere and their target of affection. It's all fun and games until he's being stabbed to death by a syringe. Nothing horribly illegal or vile, but definitely not one to dwell on for too long either. Next, All Might X All For One. Basically the adult version of the Shigaraki X Midoriya ship, but maybe even worse. Keep in mind that while the argument for a mortal character ex-adult can be reasonably viewed on both sides, the knowledge of All Might's history with All For One makes this ship a gigantic no with a burning pile of red flags. All For One was still physically the same age in appearance when he killed All Might's mentor, Nana Shimura, as he is now that his targets have shifted to Midoriya. Not to mention, All Might was just a couple years older than Midoriya currently is when All For One killed Nana. All For One is the big bad of the entire show, while All Might is the show's fallen, but not dead, yet, hero. All things considered, All Might x All For One is contextually just as bad as Midoriya x All For One. Depending on the place and time, it's not so pedophilic. Because of this, I'm going to lump in the mention of Midoriya x All For One ship here, so I don't have to talk about it anymore. Next up is Nomu x Midoriya. I promise that this is not meant to be a Midoriya based list. 
but he is the main character, so is unfortunately apparently shit with anything that moves. I'm surprised there's not a Midoriya X brick wall. Speaking of which, a whole lot of things that move in this series should not be anywhere near him, let alone touch him. Notice how I said anything that moves instead of anything that breathes or lives. While people are still heavily undecided, even in the canon universe, about what the heck a Nomu can even be considered, there is an alarming amount of people that still ship the thing with their main boy. Nomu were mostly, if not all, made from adults, which would already make it illegal. Nomus in the base understanding of their existence are illegal, considering they were created from an underground experimentation and torture. Considering all the Nomus, except a special couple of them, only have enough brain function for motor skills and taking orders, it's safe to say that they can't actually consent to anything. Not to mention, the very sight of Nomus gives Midoriya, and most of us, nightmares, as they should. So, how about we just leave the creatures there? The next few ships are all going to be based around the same general idea. Any sort of teacher slash mentor x student. These are different from the aforementioned ships like Medora x Offer 1 because these are not enemies to lover based relationships. These ships revolve around a mutual respect, in most cases paired with an unhealthy age and pedophilic grooming type of age gap. These characters all want to keep each other safe, which would be a good thing if these wouldn't be adults with contractual responsibilities to protect the teenagers they're being paired with, and if they weren't, in some cases, more than twice the teenager's age. The secondary list includes Sue x Selki, Tokiyami x Hawks, Midoriya x All Might, Bakugo x Best Genus, Bakugo x Endeavor, Midoriya x Endeavor, and literally anyone in Class 1A x Aizawa Sensei. Now, you may be wondering, why didn't you mention Shono X Endeavor? He was in the mentorship program alongside Bakugo and Midoriya. And Hawks and Endeavor are another mentor idol student group ship. I'm getting to that. On to the next part of this list. Let's call it another secondary list within the primary list, and based entirely around uh, incest and the main red flag of the entire show besides all for one himself. Endeavor. Endeavor being paired with anyone should be on this list, considering even the canon pairing of him and his wife is very clearly one-sided and, in many ways, likely non-consensual. This is why the trash-infused volcano of a human, and I'm using air quotes for that word, folks, has his own little hell spawn ships section in this episode. So that way, I never have to mention him in a romantic way in this video ever again. I already mentioned a tiny, not even scraping the iceberg, portion of the reasons Ray X Endeavor should not be a thing, but incels and abusers, apologists, supporters exist, for some reason, and not a necessarily illegal, but a few years on Hawk's part, but demented ship. First up, there's Hawks and Endeavor. Let's get any misconceptions out of the way. Hawks likes Endeavor because his mother bought him a Dollar Tree doll. The All Might ones were too expensive for her budget. That's it. Had it been a best genus doll, Hawks would show up everywhere with jeans and hair gel. Hawks gravitating toward Endeavor has nothing to do with Endeavor and everything to do with the fact that he was literally trained, not raised, by the government. The literal government. Facility style. Think Eleven from Stranger Things. The doll was the only hope or light he had. The doll didn't ask to be an Endeavor doll. It's, you know, inanimate. It was felt cloth filled with plush. Hawks had nothing except for that doll the majority of his upbringing, and that's the only reason he blindly follows Endeavor around like a lost puppy in the show. It doesn't take paying attention in your Psychology 101 class to know that this case has nothing to do with attraction and everything to do with a one-sided extreme trauma response and coping mechanism. And that's just them working together. Don't even think of pairing them. Then there comes the incestuous and a uh, pedophilic part of the Endeavor cesspool of ships. Pairing Endeavor with literally any of his children is giving you a one-way ticket to whatever version of damnation you do or don't believe in. I'm personally calling up Shigaraki and giving him your home address, just so you know. This means for literally no reason should any of the following exist. But they do, and it disgusts me. From oldest child to youngest child, Toya x Endeavor, Fuyumi x Endeavor, not so X Endeavor, 
and of course, Shadow X Endeavor. No, stop it. Get some help. The only thing Endeavor should ever be shipped with is a flame resistant straight jacket and a padded cell. I said what I said. Next! Now that he's done with, We've got one more pairing in the Todoroki family that should lead to the immediate excommunication from the fandom. But the people who ship them are out there, unfortunately. It's like a twisted version of the X-Files. Shoto X Toya. Our last ship is upon us, and boy am I glad this discussion is almost over. These last two ships actually center around the same character, just to really make sure you can't sleep tonight without getting your proper dose of nightmare fuel first. Hey, don't blame me, blame the absolute sickos that ship these. I have to see it, now you have to see it. Airy X Overhaul and Airy X Deku. Yeah, I said it. People somewhere in the fandom pair the actual six-year-old with her abuser who endlessly tortured and nearly killed her since almost infancy, and there's people who ship her with a teenager ten years older than her who saved her. Pairing an actual six-year-old with anyone or anything is just sicko behavior, but there's just special holes in the ground saved just for those people who ship these. I've said the word pedophilic and illegal numerous times in this video already, and I'm not looking to get demonetized for this, so I'm just going to say that shipping airy with literally anyone is, simply put, the biggest hell no of this episode, and in general with pairings in the fandom. That concludes today's episode of Things That Made Me Vomit. I mean, worse ships in My Hero Academia. I'm not sure how likely I am to do another one of these videos, or even a follow-up to a specific ship you'd like to see me discuss more in depth, but let me know if there's another nightmare ship that I didn't mention in the comments below. Detroit, smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. It's 100% free and turns you into a certified weeb seven days a week. Anyways, that's enough for me. My name is Bizarre, and I'll see you weebs in the next video. Cue the outro! He's bizarre. He's bizarre. He's bizarre. With saw steps to his mic to make his little sounds. The weebs jump up and cheer. Hit subscribe and stick around. ASMR most times with Minecraft on the side. Some modded games with Deku there to soothe you when you cry. Go ahead, close your eyes, kick back and put him on, and get even more bizarre through his Patreon. Need a friendly pal to get you through the night? Well, get headphones, take a listen, and maybe hit subscribe. He's bizarre. He's bizarre.